Hello friends, welcome to risingpearl.com. Today we are talking about series 3. We are learning a lot about trigonometry. This is our episode number 5. And friends, for the first time we are going to be solving questions or problems related to trigonometric ratios of an angle. This is a part 1 webisode. So we are going to probably cover 2 or 3 uh, parts to ha handle all kinds of questions that may come up on trigonometric ratios. So friends, very briefly, the trigonometric ratio of an angle of an angle we learned this in our earlier webisodes is that if you have a right triangle in this case I have a right triangle a b c and trigonometric ratios are always about an angle so if I think about angle a there are six trigonometric ratios sine a is equal to opposite side divided by the hypotenuse cos a is equal to adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse tan A is equal to opposite side divided by adjacent side. Cosec A is equal to 1 divided by sin A. That is cosec A is the reciprocal of sin A. Sec A is a reciprocal of cos A. So sec A is equal to 1 divided by cos A. Cot A is equal to 1 divided by tan A. Cot A is a reciprocal of tan A. So friends, I uh, just wanted to highlight them for you, for your quick reference. One thing that we have not talked about earlier that I think we should have discussed is that, say for example, let's look at the, let's look at tan A. So in this, in this uh, triangle, if I were to write tan A, tan A, so tan A will be actually equal to, its opposite side is BC, it will be BC divided by AB, adjacent side is AB. So this will be tan A. Now I can also write, what I can do is, I can divide both the numerator and denominator by the hypotenuse, right? So I can write tan A as BC divided by AC. And I can write, denominator is AB. I can write AB as AB divided by AC. So essentially friends what we have done this is that if somebody gives you X is equal to A by B if this is given I can always write this as I can write this as X is equal to A divided by C and B divided by C. That is if I divide a frac if I divide uh, both numerator and denominator of a fraction by the same amount the fraction does not change. So here what I have done, instead of BC divided by AB, I am dividing both the numerator and the denominator by AC. And the reason I am doing that, friends, is that now if you look at what is BC by AC, if you look at BC by AC, that is nothing but sine A. So this numerator now is nothing but sine A. And that divided by what is AB by AC? AB is this and AC is this. This is nothing but cos A. So this relationship friends that is tan A tan A we can express that as sin A divided by cos A. We did not look at that earlier. So this is not really like any seventh ratio or anything. We still have only six ratios sin A cos A tan A, cosec A, sec A, and cot A. This is just a relationship that says tan A is actually equal to sin A divided by cos A as we have just proved over here. So this is something that may come in handy as we look to solve different questions on trigonometric ratios. So friends, what kind of questions? So in this webisode, we are going to explore this type of question which is that one trigonometric ratio of an angle will be given. And then we will be asked to find out all the other trigonometric ratios of that same angle. So how are we going to approach these questions? So let's quickly design our strategy. So our strategy will be like this, friends. First of all, if one trigonometric ratio of one angle is given, it means that two sides of a right triangle are given, should be actually are given. So it means, and, and you will you will see when I say 
it means you know it implies that two sides are given and we will find out more about this similarly then first the the moment one ratio is given the moment one ratio is given for one angle it means that two sides of a right triangle are given next we are going to apply pythagoras theorem and find the third side because remember the trigonometric ratios to to write trigonometric ratios all of them we need to know all three sides so if we know two sides we can apply pythagoras theorem and find the third side and once we know the third side it really becomes easy then we can find all the trigonometric ratios of that particular angle so friends that said now let's take a look at real question this is a question number one on trigonometric ratio so sine a is equal to 3 by 4 this is what is given sine a is 3 by 4 find other trigonometric ratios of angle a so friends first thing that we will do is we will draw a triangle we will draw a right triangle now when we draw the right triangle friends i have drawn the right triangle like this what is very important to notice unless otherwise given angle a you will draw angle a as a acute angle you are not going to make angle a as 90 degrees unless and until it is given in the question that angle a or angle b or angle c is 90 degrees we are going to draw our angle as an acute angle remember it was the earlier webisode where we talked about how in any right triangle one angle is 90 degrees the other two are acute angles so if sine a is 3 by 4 we will automatically assume that angle a is an acute angle and it does not matter which angle you pick it as 90 degrees so in this example i have drawn the triangle like a b c and i have assumed that angle c is 90 degrees it does not matter you could have written b here and c here what is important is that we want to put angle a as an acute angle so when we know that sin a let's write it now so this is the right angle triangle so sin a equals to what what is sin a sin a is basically bc sin a is bc divided by ab because and friends that's why i mentioned it earlier that these ratios you absolutely need to remember right sine of an angle is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse right and this ratio is given to us as 3 by 4 so here friends if you look at how we would want to solve so we talked about if one ratio is given if one trigonometric ratio is given it means it means two sides are given now this is not literally true what it means is this ratio is given to us that is bc divided by ab that ratio is given and it is 3 by 4 so what we can do we can assume bc to be 3x and then ab to be 4x why not assume that bc is 3 and ab is 4 it could be that bc is 3 and ab is 4 but also friends what if we had bc as 6 and ab as 8 right because this is also 3 by 4 or bc could be let's say 12 right and ab is 16 i think you get the point friends basically we have a ratio which is given we do not have the absolute value which is given so we will assume that let's assume bc is 3x this is the actual measurement then ab will be 4x now applying pythagoras theorem in triangle a b c we know that 4x square 4x square is equal to is equal to 3x square 3x 
square plus AC square AC square so this implies 4x square will be 16x square is equal to 9x square plus AC square this implies that I can write AC square as 16x square minus 9x square or this will give me so 16 minus 9 will be 7x square so if AC square is 7x square so squaring both sides so if you were to square both sides AC will be equal to plus minus square root 7x right because for plus square root 7x if you square you will get 7x square if you take minus square root 7x you will still get 7x square but we will not take the minus sign why because AC is a length the length cannot have a negative value so which means that AC actually is AC actually is square root 7 times x so friends we have determined that the length AC is now square root 7 times x so I have the three sides as 3x square root 7x and 4x so at this point friends I can write all my trigonometric ratios so first we this is what I meant by that if the trigonometric ratio is given it implies that we can actually find out the other two sides we can find out the other two sides and then applying the Pythagoras theorem we can find the third side so here we have found the third side so very simply friends here I'm just going to say that so sign is given sign a right so cos a let's write this as cos a I should have given myself more space so cos a is going to be this is a so cos a is adjacent side square root 7x divided by the hypotenuse which is 4x so the xx will cancel so you will have square so cos a will be equal to square root 7 divided by 4 so you know sin a you know cos a so tan a similarly you can write this as 3x divided by square root 7x or 3 by square root 7 similarly you can find out cosec x will be the reciprocal of sine a so that will be 4 by 3 sec a will be reciprocal of cos a that will be 4 by square root 7 and similarly you can find cot a that will be the reciprocal of tan a so let me just write tan a for your reference here so tan a will be equal to will be equal to this is a so 3 it will be 3 divided by square root 7 so cot a will be square root 7 divided by 3 so friends let's take a look at more examples here now this time cot c is given as 3 divided by 4 so what are the other trigonometric ratios so like we always do we are going to draw a triangle this is absolutely important that we draw a triangle and again we will assume that c is one of the acute angles so this time I have drawn the triangle like this so C is here this is the acute angle and I chose to have angle B at 90 degrees right so what is given is cot C is 3 by 4 so let's write it so cot C is equal to 3 divided by 4 cot C is equal to 1 by tan C tan C we know that so this implies that tan c is equal to 4 by 3 correct so now tan c if this is the c tan is ab by bc so we can say this is 
4. Last time we took the the side as x, so we can take this time maybe k or p or q. I should have mentioned it last time. This k is any positive number. Basically, this k or the last example a is any other positive number. Because it is a ratio which is given, we cannot say for sure what is the exact value. So we assume that k is any positive real number. So because tan c is 4 by 3, so we can say tan c is AB by BC. So this is 4K and this is 3K. And now we are going to apply Pythagoras theorem. So we will know AC square. We will have AC square is equal to 4K square. 4K square plus 3K square. Or this will be equal to 16K square plus 9k square or this will be equal to 25k square. So if if AC square is equal to 25k k square from here what implies is AC is equal to 5k. Again AC cannot have the negative value so AC is equal to 5k so my hypotenuse is equal to 5k. It is important friends to understand that we really don't need to know the k because these are all ratios, right? We do not need to know what is the value of k. Even without that we can solve the question. So for example now, so let us write all the other trigonometric ratios, right? So let's start by sin c. Sin c is what? So this is c. It is the opposite side divided by hypotenuse. So opposite side is 4k divided by 5k. And the reason we don't need it is because this will all cancel out. So it is 4 by 5. So sin c is 4 by 5. So cos c is 5 by 4. Similarly cos c is going to be 3k divided by 5k and the kk will cancel out. So cos c will be 3 by 5. So here friends we have found out sin c, we have found out cos c, we know tan c, cos x c will be reciprocal of sin c, so it will be 5 by 4, sec c will be reciprocal of cos c, so sec c will be 5 by 3, and cot c is already given. So again friends applying this three simple steps. So one trigonometric ratio given means or it implies that we can we know two sides or what we are saying is we know we can express the two sides like this which is good enough for us to apply step three which is the Pythagoras theorem and find the third side. Third side we will also find out in the ratio in terms of the k and then once we have it we can find out all the trigonometric ratios of the same angle angle c right let's take a look at some more examples so here in this case friends what is given is in triangle abc right angled at b ab is this bc is this determine sin c and cos c so this is a little bit different type of question friends here what is given is clearly the triangle abc is right angled it is right angled at b and also ab and bc are given so let us draw our triangle so here friends what we have done we know that this length this angle is 90 degrees because that is given to us it is right angled at b now AB, so it, now we don't know whether this is A or this is A. I have just assumed this to be A, right? What is given is if I assume this to be A, then AB is 24. AB is 24 centimeter and BC, this length is 7 centimeter. And friends, again, do not worry about the fact that, you know, this obviously length looks much, much smaller than this length even though we are writing this as 24 centimeter and this as 7 centimeter. It really does not matter because again we are not drawing anything to scale. This is not a construction question. 
right? So simply applying Pythagoras theorem, you can find out the value of this. So here you just have to find out. So let's do this. So essentially what you will have is AC square will be equal to 24 square plus 7 square, right? So 24 square, we have to actually do this multiplication. So let's do it here. It definitely would be helpful if you know these squares. So 4 fours are 16, 1, 8, 9. And here, uh, this will be plus here. 2 fours are 8. So 8 and 2 twos are 4. So it looks like we have, let's write it here, 6, 9 plus 8 is 17, 1. So 5, 5, 7, 6. So we have 5. 7, 6 plus 49. So essentially, friends, if you do this, you are going to find out um, whatever the value of this is. So again, I think it may be helpful. It definitely will be helpful if you know probably the squares of numbers till, let's say, 25. That means like, you know, 21 times 21, that we know is 441. 22 times 22, 23 times 23, 24 times 24, and 25 times 25, because that will also help you in the square root. So let's just do it here. Uh, so let's see, so 5, 7, 6, and 49. If you were to add them, you will get this as 5, 5, so 1 carry over, so 11 and 1, 12, and 1, 6. So you get this as 6, 2, 5. So then AC, you will be basically squaring both sides. So AC will be square root of 6, 2, 5, which we know is actually 25. So we don't have to do the square root calculation here. We know that 25 squared is 6, 25. So AC is 6, 25. So now here, friends, we, are, we have been given the absolute dimensions of our right triangle. So there is no k or x or any common factor. That's why we are able to write the exact dimensions. So AC hypotenuse is 25 centimeter. So at this point, let us just go ahead. And now we don't have to write all the other dimensions, but we have been asked to find out sine C and cos C. So, so sine C will be equal to, this is our angle C. So sine C will be nothing but, it will be opposite side AB. So sine C is AB divided by hypotenuse AC, which is equal to AB's length is given as 24, divided by AC we found as 25. So this is sine C. And the other one we have to find out is cos C. So we say cos C is equal to, let us first write the cos C in terms of the ratio. So cos C is adjacent side, which is BC, divided by hypotenuse, which is AC, which will be equal to what is BC, we know that is 7, and hypotenuse is 25. 25. So friends, sine C is this, and cos C is this, and hence we solved our question. Let's take maybe one or two more questions before we actually wrap up. So here, friends, again, we have been given a little bit differently, 15 cot A. So I think it was like the last webisode of the webisode before I explained that really whenever we talk about these uh, ratios, this does not mean that cot, you know, is multiplied times A. That the fact that cot A is really as one unit, it is one thing. And this thing is actually expressing a ratio. But when you have 15 cot A, that means 15, it means 15 multiply by cot A. It means 15 multiply by cot A. So cot A is together, one thing. And it just means 15 times whatever the value of cot A is. Right? So that is what is given to us. So let's go ahead and draw a triangle. So we will draw a right, right angle triangle. And because A is given, so we are we have been taking this angle as A, and that is really convenient. But just to change it up this time, I have taken this angle as A. 
So pretty much the same thing. So what is given is 15 cot A equals 8. So it means that cot A, cot A is equal to 8 by 15. Why? Simply because if you divide both sides by 15, then you will have cot A on this side. And here you will have 8 divided by 15. Now cot A is also, we know, it is 1 divided by tan A. Right? So from here it implies that tan A, if you were to just you know take the reciprocal, tan A will be 15 by 8. So friends, here what we have is tan A equals 15 by 8. So if we know one ratio, it means we can actually get two sides, right? So tan A, tan A is equal to what? Tan A is, if this is A, now this is important, right? Opposite side, BC. So tan A is BC, because this is A, this is the opposite side, BC divided by adjacent side AB. AB. So if this is 15 by 8, that means we can say this is 15, say 15, uh, uh, we did like, you know, 15x, 15k, doesn't matter, like let's just call it 15x, where x is any positive number. So if BC is 15x, then AB is what? AB is 8x, 8x. So that when you divide 15x by 8x, you get 15 by 8. Right, so BC is 15x, AB is 8x. So applying Pythagoras theorem, we know that AC square is equal to 15 square plus 8 square or 8x square. So this gives us, let's write it here. So 15 square is 225x square plus 8 square is 64 square. So if you were to multiply, if you were to add them, you will get, so 5 plus 4 will be 9, 4 plus 6 will be 8, and then you will have the 2 carry over here, x square. So this is AC square. So if you square both sides, you will get AC is equal to, I believe this is, I, if I have not mistaken, I think this is 17 squared is 289. So if you take square root on both sides, you will get AC as 17x. AC as 17x. So if you get AC as 17x, so this length is now 17 x. Then friends, what do we have to find? We have to, we don't have to find all the rest of the trigonometric ratio. Specifically, we want this. So let's write this out. So sin A, trigonometric ratio sin A. Let's just probably give ourselves a little bit space here. So sin A is, so this is A. Sin A is the opposite side BC divided by the hypotenuse which is this AC. So sine A, so BC is 15x, 15x divided by AC is 17x. So both x and x will cancel out. So sine A will be 15 by 17, right? Now sec A, so sec A is really 1 by cos A. So we will write this as 1 by cos A here is AB by AC. So this is 8 divided by 8x divided by 17x or the 17 will actually go here. So it will be an x and x will cancel out. So you will have 17 by 8. So sin A is 15 by 17. 15 by 17. And sec A is 17 by 8. 
So friends, I think we will probably take a look at one final question before we actually wrap up. So that is, in a figure below this time, we have been given a shape, right? And we have been asked to find the value of tan A minus cot C. So this is a little bit interesting question in the sense, friends, that we have been given a triangle like this. And this is 90 degrees. And AB is given, BC is given. But look very closely at the question. This is not, they are not asking you to find that all trigonometric ratios of one angle. Here, what they're asking is, there are two angles involved, angle A and angle C. And we have to find, uh, this is almost an expression given, like, you know, tan A minus cot C. So first we have to individually find the value of tan A, then individually find the value of cot C, and then this minus this. That's, that is what we have to do. We are going to do the same approach though, that if these two are given, we can say that AC square applying Pythagoras theorem or from Pythagoras theorem, because angle B is 90 degrees, triangle ABC is a right angle triangle. By Pythagoras theorem, AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square, right? Or we can say that AB square, let's write it, is 12 square plus 5 square. BC is 5, 5 square. Or 12 square is 144 plus 5 square is 25. So if you do this, you are going to get this as 169. So AC square is equal to 169. Squaring both sides of this equation, we get AC is equal to 13. If you do square root of 169, you will get 13. So AC is 13 centimeters. This is the length of AC. Now, if you look at a triangle ABC, I know my three sides. So I know two sides were given. I applied the Pythagoras theorem. I found the third side. If I find the third side, I can really now find all ratios of all angles. So I need to know tan A. Let's write what is tan A. This is very important here, friends. Make sure that you focus on the right angle, correct? So tan A, this is my A. So tan A is equal to the opposite side, which is BC, divided by adjacent side, which is AB for A. For angle A, opposite side is BC, and then adjacent side is AB. This is super duper important, friends, and we have discussed this at length about the trigonometric ratios. That webisode, if you didn't get a chance, I would, I'm going to put a, give a link of that we, uh, webisode here so that you absolutely need to remember these ratios. So now we can just put the values in. So BC is 5 and AB is 12. So this is tan A. Now the other one is cot C. So cot C is equal to 1 by tan C. It's important to understand that now we are not talking about A. Our focus has shifted to this angle C. If you do cot A, you will get totally wrong answer. Because remember, like we did in the last webisode, the trigonometric ratio, there are six trigonometric ratios for each angle. So this is a trigonometric ratio for angle A, tan of angle A. Now we are doing cot of angle C. So cot is 1 by tan. So cot C is 1 by tan C. Now if you look at, so let's do 1 divided by tan C is how much? So if you look at C, so opposite to uh, C is AB. So AB is, so this will be actually, let's write it this way, AB divided by, so tan will be AV, AB divided by BC. Because it is the reciprocal, you will have BC on the numerator. So BC is 5, 5, and AB is 12. AB is 12. So my cot C is this. This is cot C. 
and this is tan C. So friends, now I just simply have to find out the value of this fraction. I know tan A, I know cot C. So tan A, tan A minus cot C is equal to tan A is 5 by 12 minus cot C, cot C is 5 by 12. Wow, what a coincidence. So this value is equal to big zero. All of this work for a big zero. So anyhow, friends, it doesn't matter whatever the value is. So in this case, we just found out the value to be zero. It could have been any other value as well. So friends, this video went on really long. But now that we are talking about questions on trigonometry, it's the first time that we are learning trigonometry together. I wanted to cover as many questions as I can. And this will be the theme going forward for other webisodes as well. So stay tuned for the next webisode where we'll talk about part two of solving questions on trigonometric ratios.